Well, hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful first night of summer 2022. Do not believe it. We have made it to the summer of 2022. Cannot imagine what the next three months is going to sound like here on Collapse Chronicles, but. As you can probably tell from the little dog, I'm not sure if the dog is alive or not. I have no idea if this dog is dead or alive. Uh, anyway, we have been working, Sancho Panza and I have been working way too hard, way too busy. It looks like it has been four days since, uh, four days since Sancho and I have, uh, brought you a chronicle of the collapse and guys I was it is 1030 at night and I have had a hell of a day and uh, I really was gonna sit here and do an in-depth oilprice.com roundup rant uh, featuring about eight stories and all of this incisive political commentary but uh we're going to scratch all that here on the first night of summer. Uh, that would be, what, Tuesday, June 21st, 22, and uh, several versions of this story. This is going to be a straightforward, you can decide for yourself what this has to do with the collapse of global industrial civilization and a planet. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with it. I understand some people will have no idea why I picked this story out. Several versions of this story on the mainstream media. This is from this outfit called Quartz. This is Quartz. Their spin on this story. <clears throat> Over half of Africa's young adults want to emigrate, otherwise known as get the hell out of Dodge. I need to be very careful to remember what channel I'm on. There would be another way to describe this. We're just going to say over half of Africa's young adults want to get out of Dodge. Uh, all right, take it away, Quartz, and I'm going to put the link on here if you want to read. This has all of these graphs and charts and breakdowns of all of these sub-Saharan African countries, but uh, you can go on the link to see all that. I'm just going to read the main, the main body of this story about this new study. Okay. Economic strife, insecurity, corruption, political intolerance, unreliable internet and poor education systems are behind the desire of many African youths to relocate to Europe or the U.S. And uh, nowhere mentioned is, you will notice, nowhere on the list, anywhere in this story, are you going to see uh, climate change, environmental issues, food insecurity, or of course the words overpopulation. Uh, nowhere in this story, any of these, you will not, I don't think you're going to find climate change, environmental degradation, food insecurity, as how many Africans getting ready to starve to death this year, and sure as hell, you are not going to hear the word overpopulation anywhere and the reason why over one half of Africa's young people want to, otherwise known as get the hell out of Dodge. Anyway, to be exact, all right. To be exact, more than half of uh, African youth aged between 18 and 24 
are likely to consider emigrating in the next three years. The next three years, if their governments do nothing to improve the quality of their lives. Yeah, that, there's a big if. This is according to the 2022 Africa Youth Survey, which they have a link to. If you go on this link, report by the Ichikowitz Family Foundation released recently in celebration. I love this. In celebration of World Refugee Day on June 20th, yesterday, I was completely unaware with all of the shit I was dealing with in my own life yesterday and with my next door neighbor dropping dead. Uh, I was completely unaware that yesterday, A, was World Refugee Day or World Refugee Day is something to celebrate. There you go. Big celebrations on World Refugee Day. Yes, anyway. All right. The study shows that on average, averaging out all of Sub-Saharan Africa, 52%, 52% of Africa's youth population want to get the hell out of Dodge, but in Nigeria and Sudan, it is three quarters of the population. In Angola and Malawi, it is two thirds of the population of people under the age of 24 getting the hell out of Dodge. Compared to the 2019 survey, this is a 22% increase in the number of youth saying they would like to move to another country. And then they just throw in there, Africa's average age is, what do you think, guys? The average age for the continent of Africa, if your guess is 19 years old. That one sentence, more than anything else, is really all you need to know. Africa's average age is 19 years old. Uh, do the math, okay? Their average age is 19 years old, and 52% of them want to get their to in Europe or the U.S. <clears throat> what is even more alarming is the fact that half of those who would like to emigrate elsewhere have no plans, no plans of returning to Africa. Gee, do you think so? Uh, they, they spend their whole life getting the hell out of Africa, which is exactly what I would be doing if I was a 19-year-old in Africa. I, I guarantee you I would be doing everything in my power to get my ass to, uh, to Europe or the United States. Uh, I would have no plans to return to Africa. I, I keep referring, every time I have this rant, uh, my old buddy Noam Chomsky, when was it, five years ago, was talking about this subject, and he said what you are going to see over the next 20 years, he, he was saying that the the exodus of young people out of Africa is going to make the Syrian Exodus uh, look like a footnote in history. Uh, I think the uh, I think the UN uh, they've probably upped this number. Last I remember, the United Nations was saying 60 million, 60 million Sub-Saharan Africans 
heading to otherwise known as Europe and more and more the United States to uh, you, you know to look for a better life. 60 million young and, and this is mostly males. This is mostly unemployed, uneducated males, sub-Saharan African males. This is a fact. The fact that I am a southern white male stating this fact. Okay. Noam Chomsky, the United Nations, Quartz Magazine, whatever. I guess I am a eugenicist by stating this alarming fact. Okay, what else is even more alarming? The study is based on researchers conducting 300 face-to-face -face interviews in Angola, the Republic of Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. That You understand the Republic of the Congo and the Democratic, or that's two different countries. My guess is one-tenth of 1% 1 of humans on this planet understand that the Republic of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo are two different, are two different countries. Ethiopia, Gabon, Ghana, Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Nigeria, Rwanda, South Africa, Sudan, Uganda and Zambia. I uh, don't know why Tanzania was not on that list. And uh, and, and a few others. And, and I will put it out there. If, 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 if by some miracle anybody listening to this rant uh, is a young person in any of these countries I would absolutely love to talk to you. I will interview you and give you full voice on here why you want to get the hell out of Dodge. I would absolutely love to hear from a young person. I actually used to have a subscriber from Nigeria, this very nice, very well-educated young man. Uh, then he disappeared a couple of years ago. Brother, if you are still out there, I would absolutely love to hear from you and interview you about what it feels like to be a young, preferably male, sub-Saharan African in the year 2022, what your life looks like. I will not hold my breath. Alright, let's do not forget the Corona Panic, which of course has killed less Africans than any other continent for two reasons. For anybody who does, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry guys, I've got to get it off my, I've got to get it off my chest. There are two reasons that Africa has such a low morbidity rate from Corona Panic. Two reasons. There aren't any fat people in Africa. There's no fat people and there's no old people. Okay? If there's no old fat people, nobody is dying from Corona Panic. Okay? Excuse the little... I just had to get it off my chest. Uh, the big mystery of why so few people is the average age of Africans is 19 years old. 19 year olds don't die of corona panic. My guess is the obesity rate of the 19 year olds in Africa is about 1 20th of what it is in the US. Skinny 19 year olds don't die of corona panic, but this is what happens to skinny 19-year-olds in sub-Saharan Africa. The corona panic hit Africa hard, not in the number of deaths, having a detrimental effect on education, 
health and economic well-being, four out of ten African youths reported that they had to pause or stop their schooling as a result of the corona panic. 34% disapprove of their government's response to the virus. They're talking about the economic lockdowns here. That Africa, where, you know, the continent of skinny young people because all the old fat people are dead already. Okay? <sighs> anyway, this is why 34%, and, and, and I would take that with a grain of salt, is a hell of a lot higher than any 34% disapprove of their government's response to the virus. One in five young Africans became unemployed as a consequence of the corona panic, meaning the economic lockdowns of the corona panic. Okay? One in five became uh, unemployed and 18% were forced to move back home from the cities. Now, that might have been a good thing, I have to admit. That that might have been a good thing. Now, I, I, I love this one. Th th this is no surprise. Within the continent, South Africa, meaning the country of South Africa, stands out as by far the most appealing destination for Africa's young people looking to immigrate. Kenya... Ghana, and, and this one I do not understand, Nigeria are other, popu or other popular destinations. And this is right after this table, which I didn't mention. Uh, 95, the number one country in Africa, 95% of respondents in Nigeria basically said they want to get the hell out of Nigeria, yet you find that Kenya, Ghana, and Nigeria are other popular destinations. You know, guys, if your life is so horrible that Nigeria, Nigeria is a popular destination to improve your life, okay, you're effed. Okay, wait, when you're looking around, when you're looking around at your life and going, I'm going to move to Nigeria to improve my life, oh yeah, oh God. Yes, little dog, do you want to move to Nigeria or Ghana? Um, imagine. Uh, moving to Ghana to improve your life. Yes, this is IFF chairperson Ivor Ichikowicz. Quote, they want to escape the problems in their home countries. They are looking for a better life. Even South Africans... Okay, so you take the number one destination in Africa, which is South Africa, obviously, uh, South Africa. Even South Africans want to leave to the U.S., close quote. And I just have to add this. If any South African listening to this wants to move this big damn pile of lumber that I have sitting out there. I gotta move this big ass pile of boards. I would absolutely love a young South American unemployed male. I mean, I'm South African unemployed male. I will put your ass to work $20 an hour to move these boards up this hill. We have work for you in Ithaca, New York. 
please emigrate to Ithaca, New York, and come to work at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I've got all the work that you need. 20 bucks an hour. Contact me. Okay. At least 39% of those surveyed said they want African countries to emulate the structure and governing systems of Western democracies. This is pretty damn close to wanting to emigrate to Nigeria to improve your life. When you're sitting around looking at your own country and you're wanting to emulate, to emulate the structure and governing systems of Western democracies, you're almost as screwed as wanting to go move to Nigeria. Okay? Make, make no mistake about this. This is, you know, this, this whole uh, rant about, you know, all of the world talking about how they hate America, how they hate the evil empire, but they want to move here. They want to be like us. They hate us and they want to become us. Make up your mind. Uh, remember, the grass is not always greener over the septic tank. That's what uh, wise words of wisdom from my mother. The grass is not always greener over the septic tank. Any sub-Saharan African wanting to emulate the structure and governance systems of Western democracies. There you go. That's gonna that's gonna solve your problems anyway. Okay. One of the biggest concerns that African youth currently have is instability. Instability. 75% are concerned about the political volatility in their continent, just like this 62-year-old honky is concerned about the political volatility in his own damn country. Rising to 91% in Kenya due to the upcoming August 9 elections and 89% in Mozambique, only 40%, only 40% of African youth believe their governments are doing enough to curb the crises in their countries. In Ethiopia, this drops to 20%, and in Nigeria, 16%. There is an 11% decline in optimism compared to the 2019 study. Yes, 11% more are now pessimistic about the future of living in Sub-Saharan Africa than they were three years ago. Big surprise. Okay. At least one half of Africa's youth have had their lives impacted by terror, insurgery, or conflict. 15% of 15% have either been approached to be recruited by a terrorist organization or know someone who has been. In Mozambique, this figure rises to 25%, especially due to the Cabo Delgado armed violence that has internally displaced over 700,000 people this month. I have never in my entire life heard of the Cabo Delgado. I have, I guess that's in Mozambique. Over 700,000 people in the last month have been uh, affected by the Cabo 
Delgado uh, armed violence. Never heard of it. And, and nobody listening to this has ever heard of it. Terrorist groups such as Boko Haram in Nigeria, Al-Shabaab in Kenya and Somalia are other cases in point. Blah, blah, blah. Ishikowitz adds that any continent that is racked by violence, internal and external, there is a very clear sign that the next generation of people who will lead the continent are neither disempowered nor ignorant of the hazards their countries and their continent face. Yes. On the contrary, these are highly motivated, highly informed, and deeply committed citizens determined to ensure they have a chance at a life that was perhaps denied to their parents. Close quote. Yes, come back to Earth, brother. However, many young adults do not want to work in the government. We do not like working in the government, Sam I am. However, many young adults do not want to work in the government because they believe their government agencies have stolen their future through corruption. Wow. A whopping 69% are dissatisfied with job creation efforts by their governments. And of course, the big one of all, and I have to admit, this would be my leading cause for getting the hell out of Africa, right here. When you really want to get to the bottom of this, this let's check in with Mr. Ishikowitz. Quote, access to the internet is a basic human right. Humans should protect the youth against high charges of mobile internet by telecom companies and stop shutting down the internet. Where there, where there is a challenge, there is also a, there is also a, there is also a, 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 only one in eight youth one in eight people under the age of 24 in Sub-Saharan Africa can afford internet. There you go. I think it's pronounced hoppy. Hoppy? What is hoppy? H-O-P-E. Oh, hoppy? Is that it? Have I been pronouncing that damn word wrong all these years? All right, where were we? Uh, okay. Sub-Saharan Africa houses more than a quarter of the world's refugee population. I guess these were all the millions of people celebrating World Refugee Day yesterday. What, what exactly does a world refugee celebration look like? Do you have an extra bowl of gruel? Is that what a, I mean, how do you celebrate World Refugee Day? What the hell does that look like? I want to see a video of a celebration of World Refugee Day from Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa houses more than a quarter of the world's refugee population, which is now around 18 million people, according to the United Nations High Commissioner of Refugees. And uh, take a wild guess of all the foreign actors seem to have an influence on the continent, youth see China. 
see China as having by far the biggest impact. 54% of youth said China is the number one dominant foreign power operating in Africa, followed by the former U.S. empire at 41%. So between China and the U.S., 95% of young Africans understand that it is China and the U.S. that are the two biggest foreign players. So what are we going to do to turn this freight train around? The report calls on African governments to commit budgets towards supporting entrepreneurship, updating educational curricula, taming corruption, there you go, taming corruption, improving health care, increasing internet penetration, I love that choice of words, increasing internet penetration and curbing election violence to keep their youth within their continent. There you go. Again, we have just read that whole story. You will not find, you will not find anywhere in that, story, in that study, in that mainstream media story, you noticed you will not find the words climate change. You will not find the words food insecurity as a reason to get the hell out of Dodge. And the last word you are going to find on that article is the O word, overpopulation, that there's too goddamn many people in Sub-Saharan Africa. But anyway, guys, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And we will see if we have the energy to get back to uh, to the oilprice.com roundup tomorrow to see how uh, fossil fuels are uh, burning up the entire planet uh, from the Arctic to Africa. Since you aren't going to find any of that mentioned in that story, we'll have to wait till tomorrow for that one. Anyway, get out there and try to find some sub-Saharan Africa to come move a big-ass pile of lumber in your yard while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. That wasn't that bad. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it, little dog.